In a couple of weeks, I'm heading to Oaxaca in Mexico for my mom's birthday. I want to be extra safe as I travel, so before I go, I'm planning on picking up a few rapid COVID-19 tests. But I wanted to know more about the science behind how they work, whether some tests on the market are better than others, and if there's anything I can do to make sure that I'm getting accurate results each and every time. So to help me and you learn more about this, I planned a little testing expedition before my trip. Vamos! There are a handful of rapid tests on the market right now, and more should be coming. We were on track to double the supply of rapid home tests available on the market each month by early November. And we are now on track to triple the number by early November. In theory, you should be able to walk into your local pharmacy, buy tests pretty easily, and then have results within 15 minutes. In mid-October, I had to try a couple of places before finding a few. Got em. I decided to call up my coworker, Brianna Abbott, because she's been covering COVID testing since the beginning of the pandemic. I wanted to know why COVID rapid tests are so popular right now. Part of it is Delta. The dynamics of the Delta variant actually arguably sort of makes the test more useful. In the summer, there was a surge in cases because of the new variant, causing demand for fast-acting tests to spike. And some experts say that the science behind the Delta variant makes these tests especially valuable. Some data suggests that Delta may multiply more quickly inside the body than previous variants, so viral loads peak faster, making you contagious sooner. The more virus, the easier it is to detect. Some folks are calling these contagiousness tests in part because they're the best at figuring out whether or not you have enough virus in your system to sort of be infectious. Now, we don't know like the precise cutoff for in infectiousness, like as it relates to how much virus you have in your system, but it tends to be that the more virus you have, the more infectious you are. Identifying infections quickly and early is even more critical for stemming the spread of COVID in the age of Delta. If somebody's contagious now, you wanna know if they're COVID positive now not knowing if you were positive 24 hours ago or 48 hours ago. That's Gigi Grunval. She's a testing expert at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. That lag time of 24 to 48 hours, she's referring to the time it usually takes to get results back from PCR tests. Sometimes it can take even longer, which isn't ideal in a pandemic. That's pretty much meaningless when it comes to public health and infection control. That lag time has to do with how they work. They look for the virus as genetic material. To detect viral RNA, labs use special machines that are kind of like a molecular magnifying glass. These machines amplify genetic information. That takes time. They're so good they can pick up trace amounts of genetic material even from dead virus. Sometimes weeks after someone has recovered. But for rapid tests, there is no amplification step. So if you test positive, that means that you have a lot of virus in your nose at that time. And so a lot of people say that rapid antigen tests are a really good measure for if somebody is contagious, because if there's a lot of virus in somebody's nose, then that means that there's a lot of virus in the air around somebody's nose and could potentially be breathed in by somebody else. So how does it do that? Let's unpack a kit. All the at-home rapid tests on the market work pretty much the same way. They come with a little strip of paper that is loaded with antibodies that detect an antigen or viral protein. That's why these tests are called antigen tests. In this case, that antigen is the nucleocapsid protein, which helps the virus keep building new copies of itself. COVID rapid tests also come with a buffer solution that helps the sample move from the swab to the antibody-carrying paper. These tests are a little bit like pregnancy tests, same sort of concept, only with a pregnancy test, you bring your own liquid. If you're negative, you'll only see one line. If your swab contains that nucleocapsid protein, a second line will appear on your test. I took my first rapid antigen test while I was talking to Gigi. No brain poke needed. Open up the card first. Okay. You'll see two holes on the card. One of those holes is where you're going to stick the, the swab. And uh, the other hole is where you're going to drop the droplets. Open up the dropper and you wanna have six drops in that, uh, that little hole. Okay, here we go. I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. So you don't need to go too far. Three quarters of an inch is what is said in the instructions. Test manufacturers found that there was enough virus in the outer part of your nose. It's a lot easier to have a test when you're not sticking a Q-tip all the way into the back of your head. Do five uh, counterclockwise or clockwise turns five times. 
Um, so there are two holes. Do you see the holes? Yeah. So you stick it into the first one and then you see it in the second one. Twist the swab three times and then there's a little adhesive. Yep, remove that. And you close the card. Within 15 minutes, I had my result. It appears that I am negative because you only have that control line. How would I know if my test was inconclusive or what? I did something that like screwed it up. If you didn't see that line where it says control, then there was something wrong with the test or something wrong with what you did and that should be tossed. I asked Gigi about how the accuracy of rapid tests stacked up to PCR because earlier in the pandemic, there were a lot of questions about how well rapid tests worked. And more recently, there's been recalls of certain batches of tests. She says the difference between the accuracy of PCR and rapid tests really depends on where you are in the course of your infection. She said they matched up best when people have symptoms, which is usually when they have the most virus and they're the most contagious. I didn't have any symptoms when I took my test. But Gigi says that more than how you feel, it's important to remember that these tests are only a moment in time. It's a matter of how much virus is in your nose. So it's just a matter of getting enough information at a frequent enough basis that you can make some good decisions. Most at-home kits include two tests for that reason. According to the US Food and Drug Administration, you're supposed to take them a couple of days apart to up the chances of detecting an infection. In the US, frequent or serial testing can be an issue, not just because of availability. Cost matters. The test I took with Gigi, which is made by Abbott Laboratories, cost anywhere between $14 and $24 for two tests. Now that starts adding up a little bit too quickly for most people. Some other readily available tests include QuickView by Quidel, which costs about $24 or $25 for two tests, and Alum, which runs about $40 for a single test. If you can't get them in a store, you can also order them on the internet. I ordered a two-pack of the Access Bio test online for $55, including shipping. That's one of the more recently FDA authorized tests, part of the push to have more tests available. So once you've actually managed to take a test, what can you do with the results? Gigi told me that my self-test should be good enough to help me decide whether it was okay to go see family and friends. But for international travel, I need certified results. Several companies are now offering that service for rapid tests, including eMed. I ordered my test online through their verified provider. That came at a premium. I paid $70 for two of these tests. That included the telehealth appointment I had to book with a certified health proctor. The company says it can't bill insurance companies directly, but that patients should be able to get the costs reimbursed. Do you see only a single pink horse on the line next to the word control at the top of the result window? Yes. All right, you have tested negative for COVID-19. After I took my test, my results were available on an app, and EMED also emailed them to me. The data also gets reported to public health agencies. We wanted to make sure that our results are actionable. That's Patrice Harris. She's the CEO and co-founder of EMED. Local, state, federal health authorities could use our data and the test results for their next steps, be that contact tracing, the ability to identify outbreaks. Experts say that's one drawback of self-testing. Unless you're taking a test like Alum or the new BD Veritor test, your test results don't get automatically reported to health authorities. So so the data kind of gets lost. That makes tracking infections in your community tricky. Having certified tests can help ensure that the results are yours and that they were taken within a certain time, an important consideration for travel. So after all that, here's what I've learned. Quantity matters. How much virus there is in your system, how often you're testing yourself, and how much transmission there is where you live. The more cases, the more we should be testing. On my first try, I got tripped up on how I was supposed to insert the swab into the card reader. After that, it was smooth sailing. If used correctly, at-home rapid tests can be an effective way to fight COVID because the immediacy of the results can help us make more informed decisions. I felt better about having my producer David over to my apartment to make this video, knowing I had just tested negative for COVID. Rapid tests could also help doctors figure out who to prescribe at-home COVID treatments to in the future. The first at-home COVID treatment, which we made another video about, could be available in the U.S. by the end of the year. And in the longer term, some public health experts hope that this foray into at-home testing will spark a revolution in diagnostics for infectious diseases more generally. 
the flu could be up first because some companies... A lot of them were actually working on tests that were supposed to detect the flu. And so the technology was sort of in motion and then the pandemic happened and some of these companies pivoted and designed the tests around COVID instead. Sometime in the future, we could be swabbing our noses for COVID and other respiratory illnesses. That could make gathering in crowds or going back to the office that much safer. We want to keep exploring how science affects our daily lives. So if you have any suggestions for topics we should tackle, please leave them in the comments. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our science and health updates. Hasta luego, nos vemos pronto. Gracias.